This was our solar system, four and a half billion years ago. Everything we know, everything we have touched, started out as nothing more than gas and dust floating in the void. At first, there were no planets or moons, not even a sun. There was only this featureless interstellar cloud. It took an extremely energetic event to reorganize this mass into something more familiar. Scientists think that a star exploded somewhere out in space. It blasted the cloud with radiation, forcing countless gas and dust particles into motion. After the disturbance, they began to clump together under the force of gravity. As more and more mass clumped up, the power of gravity grew stronger. Eventually, 99% of the cloud's mass became concentrated in one central ball. Then, it ignited. The remaining mass was flung out into a disk, spinning around the newly born sun. It continued to clump into balls, forming bodies of rock, ice, gas, or a combination of the three. Small bodies collided to create larger bodies, and larger bodies could collect all the matter nearby, clearing a path through the disk. These were the first planets of our solar system. Eight main planets have survived to this day. It has not been an easy life. All of them have been pummeled by meteors and blasted by solar radiation for billions of years. None of them bear more scars than Mercury, the smallest planet and closest to the Sun. This view was captured by NASA's Messenger probe in 2008. It shows the surface of Mercury is covered in craters of all sizes. There are craters inside craters inside craters. Many of them are surrounded by cracks, fissures, mounds, and jets of debris. They represent eons worth of meteor strikes. Today, we are going to explore this barren world. Since it isn't safe to go there in person, we will look through the eyes of Messenger instead. It was launched from Earth in 2004 and became the second spacecraft to visit Mercury after Mariner 10. In 2011, it sank into a stable orbit around the planet, and for the next four years captured hundreds of thousands of photographs of the surface. It also carried an array of cutting-edge scientific instruments to study the chemistry, geology, and magnetic properties of Mercury. Two years into the mission, it completed the stunning map of the entire surface. MESSENGER was not the first probe to reach Mercury, and it won't be the last. There is a reason we can't study this place with just Earth-based telescopes. Mercury moves in an elliptical orbit, keeping between 46 and 70 million kilometers away from the Sun. That may sound like a vast distance, and it is, but it's less than half the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Most of the time, when we try to point a telescope in that direction, we end up being blinded. On the rare occasions when we can see anything, because of the way Mercury rotates, it always shows the same side to Earth. Sending probes is necessary, so that we can see the whole planet without looking into the burning Sun. Its proximity to the Sun makes Mercury a world of extremes. It completes one orbit every 88 Earth days, giving it the shortest year of any planet. By contrast, it experiences very long days due to its slow rotation. Two full orbits are required for one day to pass on the surface. On any given day, this world is being superheated and supercooled at the same time. The sunward side of Mercury reaches temperatures of 427 degrees at the equator. That's hot enough to melt lead and vaporize sulfur. The opposite side experiences frigid temperatures down to minus 173 degrees. Even inert gases such as argon and xenon could only exist as frozen solids here. 
Such extreme variation occurs nowhere else in the solar system. Given such harsh conditions, you might think it impossible to find substances like humble water. That's what most scientists thought before the arrival of Messenger. It was believed that water and other light compounds, such as oxygen, must have been stripped from Mercury's surface by solar radiation billions of years ago. To their surprise, a radio telescope detected something that looked suspiciously like water at the north and south poles of the planet. Its presence was confirmed by Messenger a few years later, and it turned out to be ice trapped inside a few craters. This discovery was totally unexpected. Plain old ice should not exist so close to the sun. As it turns out, there is a straightforward explanation for this phenomenon. It's related to the axial tilt of Mercury. On Earth this tilt is around 23 degrees. It's responsible for our seasons. Mercury has a very gentle tilt. As a result, there are patches at each pole where sunlight never reaches, no matter what time of year it is. Those patches are the bottoms of craters left by meteorite impacts. They match up exactly with sites where ice has been spotted. No liquid water has yet been identified, but there is definitely water vapour, its gaseous form. This substance forms part of the exosphere of Mercury. It is essentially a very thin, dispersed atmosphere. Aside from water vapour and oxygen, it contains a mixture completely different from the Earth's familiar atmosphere. For a start, there are significant amounts of hydrogen and helium, the two lightest elements. They are too light to hang around for long, and they are thought to come directly from the Sun, which is mostly a ball of hydrogen plasma. They may be replenished by solar flares, in which varying amounts of plasma are launched into space. The exosphere also contains gaseous sodium, magnesium, potassium, and sulfur. All of these exist as solids on Earth. They are highly reactive. Sodium and potassium explode on contact with water, and magnesium burns easily with a searing white light. They are thought to come from rocks on the hot side of Mercury. You may have heard the stream of radiation from the sun being referred to as solar wind. It acts like wind in the sense that it exerts a force, pushing on objects in space ever so slightly. Multiplied over a huge area, that force is enough to shape the thin exosphere of Mercury into a long teardrop. It is highly compressed on the sunward side, but on the dark side, it stretches out like the tail of a comet. The solar wind is also electrically charged, and can impart a charge to elements within the exosphere. This means, for example, that it can briefly energize sodium atoms, causing them to release excess energy as yellow light. The same principle is used in yellow streetlights here on Earth, which have traditionally been sodium powered. On Mercury, it causes the night sky to glow ever so slightly. The messenger probe was equipped to study another aspect of this planet that is even harder to see. As it turns out, Mercury has its own magnetic field. When it is mapped out in three dimensions, it takes on a similar teardrop shape to the exosphere. This is because it also responds to the electrically charged solar wind, becoming compressed on one side and elongated on the other. The existence of this magnetic field implies something important about the inside of the planet. It has a partly liquid core. Scientists have long suspected that Mercury contains multiple layers of material. It is known to have a very high density, which suggests a high proportion of iron and other metals. As with Earth and the other rocky planets, those metals should be concentrated in its core. Since we haven't yet landed on the surface, let alone drilled into Mercury, it is difficult to say what the interior is like. 
Good estimates can be made by considering features of the planet's orbit and the strength of its gravitational pull, which can be investigated by orbiting probes. Based on these proxies, it appears to have an iron-based core that takes up 55% of its volume. Despite being classified as a rocky planet, it may be more correct to call this a metal planet. Part of the core is thought to be liquid. It is sandwiched between two solid layers. As the liquid portion rotates and swirls, it creates that strangely shaped magnetic field. So far we have focused on the physical aspects of Mercury, its orbit, its temperature profile, its exosphere, and its magnetic field. We have even attempted to peek inside it. However, Messenger wasn't sent there just to conduct physics experiments. It spent two years painstakingly mapping the entire surface of the planet. Along the way it uncovered countless extraordinary features, some already known, but some completely new to science. The most obvious features on the ground are impact craters. As a general rule, the width of any one crater is 10 times the width of the meteor that created it. Some of them are hundreds of kilometers wide, indicating meteors tens of kilometers in size, much like the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. Trails of debris spread in different directions like the spokes of a wheel, containing rocks excavated from deep within the crust. Calaris Basin is the largest crater on Mercury and its most distinctive feature. Images like this, in which differences in colour have been exaggerated, make its perimeter stand out. Can you tell which crater it is? Actually, I'm cheating a bit. Everything you see in this image is half of Calaris Basin. 1,550 kilometers across, surrounded by two kilometer high mountains, and absolutely filled with lava. The impact that created this structure was so big it shattered rocks on the other side of the globe. If this were to happen on Earth, it would probably mean the end of all life. In these enhanced views, different colors generally correspond with different rock types. For instance, there are many areas in which raised mounds are surrounded by orange material. These are ancient volcanoes and the rocks they produced. A system of nine overlapping volcanoes has been found in the southwest Calaris Basin. It's a similar situation to the Big Island of Hawaii, except the volcanoes of Mercury were more explosive when they were active. Due to the extremely thin atmosphere and low gravity, the ash they erupted must have spread across vast areas. There is certainly no ash to be seen today. Volcanism appears to have ended around 1 billion years ago. There are also numerous cliff faces called scarps, some of which run for over 1,000 kilometers. In this false color image, red represents high terrain and blue is low terrain. A scarp is clearly visible and it reaches 3 kilometers high. Cliffs of this magnitude cannot exist on the surface of Earth because they would quickly crumble under the influence of gravity and the weather. How these scarps were created is still something of a mystery. They may be the result of a global cooling event. That may sound strange considering the heat experienced by Mercury's sunward side. However, it appears that its metallic core has cooled down over time. Since solid objects shrink when they cool, the core shrank. In order to compensate, the crust above it had to shrink as well, creating massive cracks as if it were an eggshell being crushed. Overall, the planet's diameter may have decreased by 14 kilometers since its formation. Here is something revealed by Messenger that has only ever been seen on Mercury. Scientists call them hollows. They do not have a more specific name because they are not yet understood. They are too irregular in shape to be impact craters, 
and they do not contain the orange rocks found in volcanic craters. What could they be? One theory links the hollows with that bizarre combination of metals found in the exosphere, specifically sodium and potassium. They had to come from rocks exposed on the surface. As the theory goes, those metal-bearing rocks are heated by solar radiation to the point where the metals can sublimate. That means they are converted from solid form straight to a gas, which requires more energy than melting. Once mobilized as a gas, they are directed toward the dark side of Mercury by the solar wind. The hollows are simply the empty pits they leave behind. If this theory is correct, it would provide a neat link between conditions on the ground and in the exosphere. It would also tell us where all those gaseous metals come from, right here. Those are just the highlights. There is so much to explore on Mercury, and so much still to learn. Messenger's mission ended in 2015 when its fuel reserves ran out, but another probe is already on the way to pick up where it left off. This Bepi Colombo mission is expected to end orbit around Mercury in 2025. It will investigate the surface conditions, interior, and the magnetic field in unprecedented detail, and even try to verify the theory of general relativity. Once considered a boring and inconsequential place, Mercury has proven to be a world worthy of our attention. It is a place of extreme temperatures, colossal craters, weird geography and bizarre chemistry. You can now explore this planet yourself on the website of John Hopkins University or by downloading the Mercury map for Google Earth. Links to both these resources are available in the description below. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Feel free to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the next one. You can also leave questions, comments, or requests for future topics in the comments section. Bye for now, and good luck with your studies.